welcome back everyone. It's me, Matt. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're talking about the BMPT, otherwise known as the BMPT-72 Terminator vehicle. Now, the Hunter Killer vehicle that we've seen recently, of course, uh, coming out into the conflict in Ukraine has raised a lot of eyebrows and asked a lot of questions, primarily a lot towards me recently, of course. Matt, are you going to do a video on the Terminator? Believe it or not, I actually did do a video on this vehicle in the past, unfortunately. Uh, I got my information from a uh, source that I was not aware is actually um, from a copyrightable source, so I apologize to the creators of that. Um, it is uh, something that happens sometimes, and I do apologize, but I decided to recreate this video, and especially with a modern spin to it because the video was quite old, made in 2016, uh, and things have changed, so it's time to talk a little bit more about the Terminator vehicle and its capabilities. So, the BMPT, um, a unique vehicle in all honesty, it's designed really to be an urban fighting vehicle. Now, of course, in the Ukrainian conflict right now, prominently, this is a vehicle that's taking a lot of the heat or the pressure from the armored fighting vehicle crews because they require something that protects them on their flanks or up front in urban environments, and this vehicle is quite prominent in doing so because it's capable capabilities are not that of destroying armor or uh, anti-vehicle capabilities. It's really there to hunt and find infantry that are going to engage battle groups, armored columns, etc. with anti-tank weapon systems and such. Now the BMPT-72 is quite rare. The Russian army has used them not a huge amount in all honesty and the frontline units that have only had them is only one. There's only really one unit that's primarily used them at the moment and according to reports a motorized rifle battalion inside the central military district of the 90th tank division has only nine of these vehicles that are fully compliant to actually being able to be combat capable. That implies that the entire unit has been relocated to the west in the conflict that is going on in Ukraine which is uh, of course war is never a good thing and I'm not going to get into the political uh, situation or the actual conflict itself, but we are talking more specifically about the tank. Now, um, this was designed to meet the specific requirement that the Russian army needed for a heavy infantry combat vehicle, and as I said, it is most suited for urban counterinsurgency, such as that of the Moscow forces faced in the two Chechen operations in the mid-1990s and the early 2000s. Now, you're probably wondering, how did the BMPT get its name as the Terminator? When I think of the Terminator, I think of, of course, the T-1000 or the uh, hunter-killer drones that are crushing skulls in the plains of the United States somewhere after a nuclear apocalypse. But no, the Terminator's name is due to its anti-personnel capabilities of the system that was built upon the T-72 or T-90S tank chassis. The vehicle has fairly good armor protection, maneuverability, and ruggedness to maneuver directly with the tank platoon. It has laminated and reactive armor, weighs around 47 tons, and carries a five-man crew with a very low-profile turret, housing the 30mm automatic cannon with coaxial AG-17D grenade launchers and the AT-14 Cornet, or anti-tank guided missile, and the 7.62mm machine guns as well. The most recent version of the BMPT has been renamed the BMOP and nicknamed the Terminator 2. Despite the name change, the Terminator 2 fulfills the same role as the originally intended but also built upon T-72 and T-90 chassis vehicles. However, the Russian Department of Ministry of Grozgin oversees the Russian defense industry suggests that the Terminator 2 could also be built upon Russia's new heavier chassis, the Armata. The Terminator 2 was primarily attended to attack direct destroying personnel, i.e. personnel that are there to hunt and kill armor directly with anti-tank weapon systems such as the Javelin or other sophisticated weapon systems like tow, things like that. The vehicle is spray and pray. I'll be directly honest with you, this thing is designed to smash as much firepower down towards lightly skinned vehicles, armored fighting vehicles, or platoons of troops in the open or in urban environments. It's also very effective in wood lines because its optics can see with its thermals through the wood line uh, seeing, you know, tank emplacements or even potentially anti-tank kind of missile emplacements, bunkers and such that are ranging in on tank platoons. The dual 2A42 30mm automatic cannons have 1700 rounds of ammunition capable of destroying lightly armoured vehicles and speed air targets up to around 2500 meters and an anti-tank guided missile system for personnel and other armoured projects such as BMPs, IFVs, up to around 4000 meters. A PKTM 7.62mm machine gun is mounted with a remote loader and 2,100 rounds of ammunition, capable of destroying personnel and unarmored targets up to around 1,600 meters. There is also two AG-17 automatic grenade launchers with 600 rounds in there as well. Almost like little ball turrets on the side of the vehicle, these things spray and pray 
high explosive grenades all over the place and give confidence to the commander, driver and crew members that if something's in front of them, it's probably not going to be there for much longer. It is not about accuracy, it's about weight of fire. The BMPT's anti-tank cam capability comes with the four Attacker T guided missiles with general purpose 9M121F and anti-tank 9M121 warheads with 5,000 meters standoff range. This is a very effective vehicle if necessary to knock out armor, but really is not destined to go forward of the platoon of tanks and start trying to take out tanks. It's there to protect the flanks and to observe and to support when going into urban environments or areas that... You know, some of the bigger tanks can't see whether it be their optics or their uh, field of fire or their view viewing arcs, things like that. This thing has a lot more capability in doing that. Quicker turnaround time of that turret. To spin around a uh, larger turret with the main gun of armored battle groups can take some time in tight, close environments like wood lines, things like this. This thing can spin around on its own uh, axis within the realm or the profile of the vehicle without interfering with things like trees, buildings, lampposts, etc. And still, though, have that standoff range if necessary to use those more uh, sophisticated weapons like the anti-tank guided missiles. The vehicle has a five-man crew consisting of a vehicle commander, gunner, driver, mechanic, and two grenadier operators, which would be amazing being able to use those AGS uh, 17D automatic grenade launchers because, as I said, it's almost a spray and pray. The vehicle is designed to let the crew fight from safety of the vehicle and does not require any existing or exiting profile of the vehicle i.e you don't have to sort of get out and start manning machine guns like you would as a loader or operator of inside of a main battle tank with the guns on top of the vehicle everything is internally secured which is specifically designed that way so the infantry can't pop you off as you're trying to engage them all weapon systems are remote control which means you don't have to then also get into the same view range or the viewfinder of the vehicle you can actually do it down in the hull or the guts of the vehicle using remote weapon systems which allows again infantry to not take out your optics with your head behind it uh, your offset or, or tucked into the belly of the beast to be able to be a lot safer the vehicle does have aerosol smoke capability if necessary to obscure its location from target acquisition systems when lased and the panoramic sight will acquire the offending laser to readily detect fire and return it quickly. The vehicle chassis will also permit the vehicle to be mounted with mine or obstacle plows to facilitate maneuvers. In 2007, the Russian Federation seemed well on its way adopting the BMPT in its full form. However, a lot of disagreements between the Russian Ministry of Defense were defying when this thing was going to be used and how it was going to be used. A lot of discussion was also going about which chassis it should go on. Some said T-90s, some said T-72s. Although not specified, the BMPT would likely though be fully placed on the T-90 chassis as a tender for large quantities of T-90S tanks were under consideration at the time. Hopes for fielding the vehicle were dashed in 2010 when the Russian MOD announced that funding of the BMPT had been cancelled. Initially, it was reported the cause of cancellation stemmed from the Russian defense ministers at the time desire to build a more Western-styled military. Of course, that did not come to be. In short order, the BMPT, the BTR-90 and the further T-90S tank acquisitions were all cancelled. In 2011, the T-95 Black Eagle program was also cancelled, but the cancellation was attributed to the development of the new universal chassis of the beautiful Armada tank, which I'll safely say I'll quite happily take the Armada over more of these kind of vehicles. In tank support, vehicles are integrated into the Russian order of battle. Russian force structure, tactics, and doctrine will likely change for the tank and motorized rifle units, and conventional wisdom requires that the tanks be supported by dismounted infantry while in urban settings to protect the tanks from anti-tank guided missiles. Unfortunately for dismounted troops, they are exposed to small arms fire while explosives are bouncing all over them when providing this kind of support. Therefore, the BMPT seemed the most likely and most logical reason to protect armored battle groups or brigades as they push forward as an armored force. But much has changed in the Russian ground forces since the idea of the BMPT was initially created. Russia has abandoned most regimental division structures in favor of brigades. Despite large-scale reforms of the military units of brigade size levels and above, there have been relatively few changes at lower echelons, especially at the battalion level and below, where little has changed since the Soviet times. Since BMPTs are intended to support tanks directly and we built on the same chassis as the tanks they support, they will almost certainly be organic to the tank battalions to facilitate training and maintenance. Due to the ratio of tanks to BMPTs varying by environment, BMPTs will probably not be the organic tank platoon itself. 
they'll be integrated as necessary, which is why you don't see them very often. They're just not as required. Most armoured forces don't need these unless absolutely necessary. And normally when it comes to a structure of something like this, it's less certain if some something like Russia will simply add on these two tank battalions modified table of organisational charts for equipment, which is about 32 tanks per, say, platoon or company, or if the number of added BMPTs will offset a reduction of an equivalent number of tanks, it's really hard to say. That's why we're not seeing them structured in armoured forces like we would normally see them. Now, there's been a lot of discussion about this vehicle and a lot of different articles. I know there's thousands of videos talking about this vehicle because, of course, as soon as you see something like Terminator coming up in your feed and it's a tank-style vehicle, you're going to want to look at it. But there's been a lot of claims and controversy about the BMPT and how it has potentially the same combat power as six BMPs and 40 soldiers. And there's been all sorts of different military circles and videos and channels talking about this vehicle's back and forth. The end of the day, folks, it is a T-72 or a T-90S uh, set up with a different turret on top of it, and it's there to provide support to infantry. Although the improvements to the BMP T Terminator 2 may alleviate some of the concerns, there's still some speculation about the general value of this vehicle on the battlefield. However, the reality is, is that this vehicle is filling somewhat of a bridged gap between the infantry fighting vehicle, APCs, and main battle tanks. It's giving some flank protection. It's mobile, it's quick, it's able to, you know, skirt in between um, armored columns, etc., and provide that quick, intimate support. I do like the fact that this thing is just completely spray and pray. I mean, it's, yes, able to take out soft skin vehicles and some cars, PMPs, things like that. And in essence, that's kind of what you need. We're, we're talking about infantry that can pop in quickly and pull back out again. We're, we're seeing, you know, anti-tank guided missiles being one of the prominent uh, battle deciding factors on the uh, tank platforms of today, uh, taking out tanks from, you know, almost a mile away, uh, even further, uh, with a couple of infantry soldiers, a few tubes, and off they go. This thing is putting a little bit more fear back into the realm of infantry that are trying to use some of these systems because it is absolutely dominating large areas of ground with massive amounts of fire and optics that are designed specifically to find infantry in a wide arc of fire or in tight enclosed spaces such as woodlines uh, and urban environments that the uh, armored battle groups are starting to fear uh, going into with you know buildings all over the place and these anti-tank platforms being able to engage them in close range and close, close proximity i have to say this thing is absolutely spray and pray to the nines uh, that does not mean, though, that it's not effective at being able to put targets down. Uh, those uh, anti-tank guided missiles severely impact, um, you know, the standoff of other fighting vehicles that could be coming to engage it. Uh, you don't want to get in the way of the optics of that thing, and if it can find you and range you in with those ATGMs, you're going to have a really bad day. The grenade launchers is kind of, I would say, archaic. It's interesting that they've put them on the front of the vehicle, uh, but they're there to really sort of prevent anything that's in front of it uh, getting close and just spraying and engaging wood lines or small areas of buildings villages etc and suppressing them uh it's not there to be accurate way to fire but it <laughs> almost looks like a dalek in some regard um but folks uh, i hope you enjoyed a little bit uh, about this video today and you learned a little bit about the terminator i have to admit it's in my eyes somewhat overrated but Definitely something that I think in today's modern conflict is necessary. Maybe more of them may be needed. Um, I'm really unsure of its effectiveness because I don't have enough information to work with to say that these vehicles are actually doing what's necessary. I would like to see, you know, what the sort of capabilities are of this vehicle in an anti-aircraft role. If you could combine this into a fully fledged radar operated system uh, as a SBAAG to knock out uh, aircraft very efficiently, you're giving not only an infantry standoff and protection to your armored battle groups, but a very good uh, SBAAG uh, self-propelled anti-aircraft gun platform as well. Uh, but you are then starting to deter away from why would I need to put this thing into a sort of armoured platform so much to say as I could put it on wheels and make it a lot quicker. Because uh, once you put something on tracks, you slow things down significantly and they're a lot harder to maintain. So, you know, anti-aircraft platforms that you see most of today are starting to go in the we wheeled format so they can get in and out of areas quickly and protect the flanks or the, uh, the uh, you know, the rear echelon uh, when it comes to anti uh anti-aircraft strikes things like that so 
Thanks again for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do want to see more, please click the little bell by the subscribe button. You can check out all my links below, including my Patreon and PayPal. And thank you everyone who has been supporting my channel. It really does mean a lot to me. You can also go check out my clothing uh, sponsor brand that's an artillery themed clothing brand known as Attire for Effect. And their website is linked below. They got some really cool stuff for those of you in the artillery around there. And uh, you can go check that out. Thanks again and have a wonderful day. All the best. Bye bye.